Okay, in this video, we are going to, uh, we're going to cause the food to spoil. So, uh, we'll go into our um, tick function. That's when we do all of our logic before we redraw the screen. And let's um, go get, some, let's go get a function that will cause our food to spoil. So I have a function here that I called maybe spoil food. And maybe, uh, where did I put that? I put that um, after, after is dead, but before draw. Maybe spoil food and I'll probably put this down here. I'll keep these all together. And uh, let's see, check food, tick. Um, yeah, okay. So what is maybe spoil food gonna do? Well, we can tell, um, we can already tell, you can probably already see my intent is that there's a chance that food will spoil, but it's not guaranteed. So I'll go to that, grab that function. Go back down, ah, I always do that. And let's do under here, maybe food. And we'll go here, maybe spoil food. Uh, no, let's let's not get in, the, in between those two. Let's do here. Maybe spoil food. So what we have is we're gonna get math.random. Some value um, between zero and one. It's gonna be different every time. It's not truly random because it's really hard to get truly random, if not impossible, with a computer. And we'll have chance food spoil. So we're gonna need that global variable chance food spoil. Back up here, chance food. So I've set chance food spoil to uh, 0.05. So 5% of the time, um, some of the food will spoil. And if we get a random number that is less than 0 0.5, then we'll set a const, which will be random food points. We'll just pick a random element. And let's go grab that random element. And the reason this is called random element is because it, you pass it an array and it gives you a random element in that array. So we just check and see if that array is greater, if it has at least some elements in it. And I could probably change this to um, is empty. And actually, let's, let's do that. It, function is array empty and is tells us it's going to be boolean is it empty yes or no and then we'll say i don't know if we can do array so let's do um let's do r i think array might be a keyword and we want to avoid that and then we can say um it's it's empty if the size, if the length of the array is zero. So now we can say, is array empty elements. But we don't want to do this if the array is empty. We want to do it if it's not empty. So if not is array empty, then we will get a random index, which is um, we're going to get a random number and we're going to multiply it by elements.length. So this will be a number between zero and one. If the length is like eight, then we'll multiply eight times something between zero and one, and that will give us some fraction of the length. And then we'll take the floor of that so we get it to a, be an integer value with no um, decimal, uh, nothing, no, de no points after the, no decimal points after the zero. We'll store that, that random index, and then we'll return elements random index. So we'll index into the array by some random amount between uh, zero and the length of the array minus one. Now, that might be an issue because if the length is, yeah. Um, if this is one, that's gonna be an issue. If this was one, then we would do elements.length. So if the array was uh, had length eight, and we times that by one, we would get eight. And if we took the floor of that, we'd get eight. However, if we try and get the eighth element of the array, if we did this, the index eight, there is no index eight in an array that is only eight long. It goes from zero to seven because the first one is zero. So let's do math.random 
minus 0. Point some small amount so that we can't get exactly 1. Um, and I wonder, let's, that, that's obscure logic. Somebody's going to go, why are you doing that? And it's not going to be obvious why. So let's put that in um, its own variable. Ah, that is not what I wanted. So let's say, uh, let's call that const um, less than array length equals that. And then we'll say, oh, um, yeah, we'll do times elements dot length. Or we could call it um, valid index, valid index. And then that'll be a hint that somebody will look at this and say, oh, there's some logic in here that's making it so we get a valid index. And they'll probably see this. And maybe they'll figure out um, that uh, that random will give us, it could give us a one. So let's do valid index. And then we don't need to times it by that. So there we go. So we'll get a valid index because we're not getting one. And then um, return elements, then we'll index into that elements array, we'll get the random um, valid index math.floor. No, actually, math.floor should be up here. Math.floor. That should be like that. And yeah, so let's rename this to. Oh, uh, I don't know. Valid random. Uh, Kind of back to where we were, but just renaming it. Yeah, okay, that's enough. It's We're adding this on to say it has to be a valid random index, which is a hint that, oh, there is an invalid random index that you could get. And maybe someone will look at this and figure out, oh, you have to subtract a little bit to make sure you're not exactly on one. So, because if we, if we did times elements dot length minus one, then it would be very rare for the random number to be one exactly. So yeah, I think that works. So random elements in that array of, of elements, if you if it's not empty, then get a valid random index and return that. Otherwise, if it is empty, just return undefined. So we've got our random element. And we have maybe spoil food. So that's going to go if if we rolled, you know, rolled, at, like if you're rolling dice, you're rolling, getting a random number. If we rolled something that's less than chance spoiled, chance food spoil, we'll get our random point using random element and with the food array. So if we have food, it can spoil. If we don't have food, then it can't spoil. So if that returns undefined, we'll check for that. Is random food point not equal to undefined? And if it's not, then we'll remove the food at that point, and then we'll add to spoiled food that point. So spoiled food is also just a array of food points. So let's go grab that. Um, we'll grab the color. We're going to need that. So let's do get the color and then we'll grab spoiled food. So we have food. Ah, I keep doing that. Um, spoiled food. And then uh, we want to get rid of, uh, when we restart the game, that will get rid of all the spoiled food. Um, yeah, so that, sh I think that should work. Let's try it out. All right. So if we stick around long enough. Oh, no, there we go. Elements is not defined. Let's go find out. That was on line 100. Is array empty? Line 100. So this is one of the reasons why I'm I'm using JavaScript and why I'm doing these why I'm doing these videos on it is because JavaScript has such a good debugger and so, such good tools in this console. And by the way, if you want to get here, um, you can do I think it's uh, Command Option I if you're on the Mac, or you just go up into your menu, go to More Tools, and go to Developer Tools, and it will open up this whole. Um, sidebar with all kinds of great tools in it. And there's some videos you can watch that show you all kinds of things. Uh, let's see, you can only even open up your console. Uh, what does that say? 
Uh, I'm still learning. So anyways, let's go to line 100. Is array empty? Elements is not defined. So here we go. Elements. Ah, we changed this to array. So let's fix that. And for the sake of testing, let's change this to the a very good chance every tick that something is going to spoil. Oh, uh, so things are just disappearing. And I have to have my focus over here. So things are just disappearing. And why is that? That's an interesting bug. So let's see here. Let's go to our spoiled food. Oh, because we're not drawing the spoiled food. We have to draw that. So let's go back uh, into our other code in our draw function. And let's draw the spoiled food. Go here, draw food. Put, uh, da, 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 da. Draw spoiled. So same as um, drawing food, we're going to go through the spoiled food array. We're going to map a function over that. And within these parentheses is the function itself. It's an anonymous function. So here's our point uh, uh, variable. So each spoiled food point is going to be passed into this um, variable. And then we're going to call draw cell with that point and the spoiled food color. So we have draw cell just below because we already use that with food. And that's why it doesn't say like draw food cell because it could be any kind of cell and we pass it a point and a color and it will draw that thing and fill in a rectangle at that point with that color. So let's save that. Go back to our game. Oh, something's still not working. We're still not, we're still not seeing that. So let's see, spoiled food map point draw cells. Let's go see where, oh, we're not calling that. Uh, let's go to our draw function. We are draw food, but we're not doing draw spoiled food. A lot of programming is debugging. Oh, there it is. So there we're drawing spoiled food, but nothing's happening when we run over the spoiled food. So let's add the logic for shrinking ourselves if we run into a spoiled food. Okay, spoiled food. And um, let's see. Probably in the tick function. Check food is dead. Allow movement. Draw. Where do we do that? Move, maybe? Uh, move. Here we go. And then has grown. Has shrunk. So. So here we go. Um, no, uh, check food. I think if we change this to maybe grow, uh, what do we call this? Let's go see here. Tick. Uh, there we go. Grow if on food. This is probably could have a better place. Ignore that for now. I'll probably use one of those. So if has shrunk. So in our grow if on food. See, that's not a very good um, function name for that now. It sh really should be, I think we should have a different function. I think we should call this um, function maybe shrink. And we're passing a point. We don't really need to pass a point. Snake head point. We could just grab it because like right here, we're just, it's a global variable. We're just getting snake parts. Uh, snake head, but why not? So if has shrunk. So wherever we do grow on food, we need to add maybe shrink with the snake head. So let's go back there and we'll say if has shrunk. So we're going to need that function. And what that will do is 
has shrunk. We pass it a point. So here we're calling it with the snake head point and is on spoiled food. So let's get that. Now it might, again, seem a little weird that we're, we have a function that only does one thing. And the one thing it does is just call a different function. But what we're doing is we're expressing the relationship between shrinking and being on spoiled food. Has shrunk says we shrink if we're on spoiled food. So we've connected those two ideas together. It is spoiled, is on spoiled food. Um, now we could just call is on, but we wouldn't, um, it wouldn't be clear. Uh, we'd have to pass in the spoiled food here. We could actually do that. We could just say um, is on and then say spoiled food. I think, I think let's do that. There's no point in having another function that does, that. we could just say you have shrunk if you're on spoiled food. I think that's clear enough. So let's do that. So has shrunk. So if you if you have shrunk, which means that you're on a spoiled food, we need to remove that spoiled food. So let's do that. Remove spoiled. And that is after remove food. So right here, put remove spoiled food. And again, we'll pass in a point. We'll get the X out of that, the Y out of that. We'll go, we'll get spoiled food. We'll filter it for anything. We'll, we'll filter out anything that is on that point. And so everything that isn't on the point of the spoiled food that we're removing, we'll keep and we'll assign that back to, um, what's the, oh yeah, shift one. Is it, how do I, oh, visual, there we go. I just wanted to highlight that. So you do uh, shift V for visual in Vim. Um, so there we go. So spoiled food, we'll reset that global variable to be the spoiled food and we'll filter out anything that is on that point. So let's, I don't know where we are yet, so let's just go back and we'll try it. So if we, we first we have to grow. Oh, this is not working. This is really hard to find. Uh, point is not defined. We need to, now that we're actually playing the game, we need to go back and make this reasonable. So let's do, set this back to 500, chance of food. We'll keep that pretty high, but chance of spoil, we'll set that to uh, pretty rare. So there we go. Let's go get some food. And then we'll, let's just hover around one of these points. So oh, there we go. There's one that we can get. Let's see if we shrink. Oh, nope. Point is not defined at maybe shrink line 133. Uh, that's because it's snake head point. What I probably should be doing here is when I rename something, like if I'm going to rename this, I should probably do a search and replace to rename that. And in Vim, that's pretty easy to localize a search and replace. Like if I wanted to do that, I could do 131 to 134 replace snake head point with foo. And on all instances of the line, I could do that. And now they're all changed. And so I don't have to worry about messing up and not and missing some. So let's go back to here. Restart, let's grab some food. So we're bigger. And then we can hover around this green one here until it goes. Actually, we're probably better off to go find This is annoying. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's see if we shrink. Yep, we sh I think pretty sure we shrunk. All right, good enough. Now, if we shrink too much, we should die. But you know what? I will, uh, we got that working. Let's just call it a video and then the next one I'll go make it so that if we shrink uh, to nothing, that we die.